Well, I'm always giving my testimony, so I thought it was time I shared our testimony between Philip and I, because I think he has a wonderful testimony yes, too. Yes. I went down to preach in Bury St. Edmunds, and Philip was in the congregation. And I, every time I looked up, he was watching me, and I thought to myself, I wonder who that man is. So anyway, he came to see me after the meeting, and he said to me, I enjoyed your message. And I said, good. And he said to me, I was going to ask you if you would have lunch with me. And I said, I don't live down here, I live in Yorkshire. And he says, Yorkshire? <laughs> oh, I was going to ask you to go out with me for lunch. And I said, sure, it's only up the motorway. I said, I'm up and down the motorway all the time because I preach down here a lot. And he says, well, I'll, I'll, I'll get your phone number, he says, and we'll keep in touch. So anyway, he got my phone number and we went out for lunch. And I remember the place we went to for lunch, it was called the Cherry Tree. And we went out and we had a lovely lunch and Philip took me back to his house. He had a big house by the sea and he took me back to his house for coffee. And I was sitting talking to him and I thought to myself, he asked me we to keep on going with him. And there was something about him that didn't jail in my spirit. Do you know the way you can feel in your spirit? So I said to him, when did you give your heart to the Lord? And he said, I said, are you born again? He said, oh, I don't need that. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm an Anglican. I've been christened and confirmed. He said, I don't need that born again stuff. And I thought that's what wasn't gelling in my spirit. And I said to him, I want to read you something. So I opened my Bible and I said, you're a church man, aren't you? You go to church? And he said, yeah. And I said, there was a man for the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. I said, he was a church man. And he came to Jesus by night and he said unto him, so Jesus, I know that you're from God because of the miracles you do. So tell me what's wrong with me, because I'm a leader of the Jews. And Jesus said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. And he said, born again? How can a man be born again when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus said, a man must be born of water and of the Spirit. He says, and otherwise you can't get into the kingdom of God. And Philip said, oh, I don't know about that. He said, I've always been a Christian. And I said, that's the answer that Nicodemus was going to give. I've always been a church man. I said, not a Christian. A Christian is somebody who's invited Jesus into their life and changed over, being not conformed to this world, but transformed. Have you been transformed? And he says, no. And I said, oh, Philip, because he's already, we've already been going out together for a good while this time. And I says, I couldn't marry you. I said, because to me, you're not saved. And he said, not saved? And I said, no. I said, I invited you up for the weekend and took him to church, do you remember? I said, but I thought you were the same as me. I thought you had given your life to God. I said, because you talk like me and you walk like me, that's what we have to be aware of. Because a lot of these church people, they talk the talk, mm -hmm. and they walk the walk, but they're not saved. 
So anyway, I said to Philip, well, you might as well stay the weekend now because I've invited you up because we weren't sleeping together or anything because we weren't married. I was sleeping in, in my little office and Philip was, I gave Philip my bedroom. Mm -hmm. So anyway, the two of us sat down and he says to me, oh no, and I said, have you ever seen a Christian video? And he said, no, and I said, I'd like to show you one before you go home. It's Colin Urquhart. My memory's still good. Be ye holy, for I am holy. I said I was to go and preach and hear him, but I've been at home and preaching, couldn't get to hear him, so somebody gave me his video. So Philip sat down and he watched it, and Colin Urquhart was talking about being born again and that how you had to give your life to Jesus. And he made an appeal at the end. And Philip got up and got down on his knees and gave his life to the Lord. And the Lord said to me, this is the man you're going to marry. So I said to him, you've just got born again. He says, oh, no. I said, well, we can get married now. I can say yes. So anyway, Philip and I went out and I said to him, by the way, I'm getting ready to go to Israel. And he said, can I go with you? I was right around the trip for Israel, do you remember, for the church. And I says, he says, can I go with you? So we rang up and the man said there was one place left and Philip took it and he went to Israel with me. And whenever we got to Israel, he said to me, I've got a surprise for you. I'll put in to be baptized in the River Jordan by the man who was running the trip. So he went and he seen the man about getting baptized. And of course he had to give a testimony to get baptized to say when he accepted Christ. And he had just accepted him before we left. So anyway, I watched him being baptized in the River Jordan and I thought to myself, he's turning into a soul, getting met on the Damascus Road and giving his life to the Lord and then getting baptized. So anyway, we had a wonderful time in Israel and we, got, we decided to get married. So we came back and we went and got engaged and we made plans to get married. And Philip said to me, what have I to do now? And he said, no, this is the wrong way round, but will you be the spiritual advisor in our house till I learn what a Christian's all about? So I said, yeah, because I was preaching at the time and the ministry was going really well. And I was being asked to preach all over the place. So um, he says to me, uh, will you be the spiritual advisor? And I said, yes. So he says to me, what's the next step? And I said, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So I laid hands and prayed for him and nothing happened. And we went to church that night and we were singing a hymn. And I turned around, Philip was singing in tongues. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, you've been baptised in the Holy Spirit. And he says, imagine that. So I said, this is really a soul getting saved, baptised in water. And now you've been filled with the Spirit. So anyway, we went down to church and the minister, they were looking for a minister. And they asked me, would I stay on and preach? And Olive and I used to go around on the pastoral care. Morris and I started a pastoral care team for the residential homes because mm -hmm. I felt sorry for the old people who'd been put in homes mm -hmm. when they didn't want to go into homes. So I asked Morris, could we start a care thing for them? So we used to go to all the homes and visit the old people and we saw many changes in the URC. Fred got saved first 
he'd been running the church for years and he got saved and went mad, went and got baptised down in the what in the, the beach and then Fred and then no um, not Fred. Yes, Fred got saved. But then um Albert oh Albert I loved Albert and Albert was another man. I don't need that nonsense. I'm an Anglican. I'm a verger in, in, in the, the big Anglican church in town. I don't need to be born again. But he got gloriously born again, so he did. And he was running up and down the aisle singing hallelujah. So he was, and he always mentioned in his testimony, Sally came and told me I needed to be born again and I threw her out. He always said that. And I said, so he did. So then I seen different people getting saved and born again. And the church began to change. And then I started a, a prayer breakfast on Saturday mornings at 7 o'clock. And all of me at the breakfast turn Mary Indeed. made the breakfast every Saturday morning, bacon and egg and soda bread and potato bread. And we used to start the week in the church with prayer and people started getting saved and getting healed. And we could see a real change in the church. And the Lord kept saying to me, if you bring love in, it's the greatest thing. It's the greatest thing. And I said, Lord, I'm not very good at loving people who don't love me. And he says, I'll teach you to love people who don't love you. So I found myself changing. So he started with me. So he starts with the leaders. And I found myself really loving people who didn't love me. And some of the things that said about you in your leadership is terrible, you know, because I ran.